Hi, this is Dave. Uh, welcome to DOSember. Uh, you may or may not know there's a bunch of retro computing YouTubers that are doing an event they're calling DOSember, where you do projects uh, based on MS DOS or PC DOS. And uh, I thought I would join in uh, to uh, try to connect a little more with uh, the community there. And uh, some of the folks are doing an intro, an intro video and uh, about their first experiences with DOS. So that's what I'm going to do today and, and tell you about a project that I'm thinking to do. So I'm a Gen X person and I was in college from uh, 87 to 91 and that's the time that I was introduced to DOS. And the way I was introduced to it was uh, I was in school. We had just converted from using uh, a Prime 750 time-sharing computer to teach um, assembly language programming to using the x86 architecture. And I had some exposure to the x86 in the physics department using the 8080, uh, using the SDK 8085, you know, 70s era Intel processors to do some TTL logic stuff. But in the computer science department, which was one of my majors, um, you know, I picked up this in 88, the IBM ROM BIOS, and started to learn assembler programming. I had never done it before on my uh, Commodore equipment. The first application that I remember writing myself under DOS was this. It was called MiniDraw, and it was a, uh, a paint program or a drawing program that ran in a graphics mode on, uh, at the time I was using the school's uh, IBM PS2 Model 80 uh, Tower Case 386. So 1988, uh, this is December of 88, and I wrote this program, uh, and, and it worked. Uh, you could uh, draw images and save them to disk and stuff. So. Uh, so I thought, why don't I revisit that, you know, this now uh, 32 years later and see if I can get that working again. Now, that's the my first exposure to DOS, at least seriously. Uh, I had to use it because we were, we were working on the x86 architecture. So my coursework had, you know, stuff like uh, teaching about the 8088 and but remember this is 1988 so uh so there was uh you know that that, that 8088 that was a not an interesting processor right i mean i was into motorola stuff and we were all we were on the cusp of the 68040 coming out which is what i have in my amiga there so uh so it seemed a, a bit primitive from a architecture standpoint as well as from a software uh, operating system standpoint so Let's jump to well, what was my first DOS machine. Well, my first DOS machine was was this. This is the uh, A2088 uh, XT bridge board for the Commodore Amiga. And I bought it. In fact, it was included with this machine. So this is, a, uh, this is an XT class 8088, only running at 4.077 megahertz. Um, and it's a card that fits in the Amiga that bridges the uh, Amiga Zorro slots to the PC XT slots and gives you uh, gives you the ability to run DOS on an Amiga concurrently. Uh, so multi multi processor uh, asymmetric, right? One's running DOS and the other one's running the Amiga operating system. So um, so that I got in 1990. And how did I get it? Well, I did a dive into my uh, crawl space in my basement to find this stuff. I found the ca the card and the card looks it looks absolutely brand new. And the reason it looks absolutely brand new is I hardly use this at all. In fact, I considered it to be a piece of junk. It came with a bundled package. I thought maybe I would need to do PC stuff. So it came with a bundled package that I bought under something called the Commodore uh, Educational uh, Purchase Program. A lot of people don't know a lot about this program, but I happened to work for my university in the computer sciences department, and I was one of the people that encouraged them to participate in Commodore's educational purchase program. So consequently, you know, through my dive in the basement, I found a lot of documentation about it. And I'm going to show you a little glimpse of how I was introduced to it. So here's a here's a printout on a line printer on our on our time sharing system from uh, from Usenet announcing the Commodore. Uh, educational purchase program. Here's a price list of a whole bunch of bundled packages and things and it looks like the one that I bought is listed here at $15.99 and the only thing that I remember that seems different is I don't think mine had a monitor so perhaps I paid $400 less than that and what I got is the 2000 an extra internal floppy drive and the XT bridge board which also had a five and a quarter inch floppy drive. 
that's the way I got the machine, and uh, at, you know at a significant discount, uh, bundled that way. But the machine today is, I mean, right away I wanted to put a hard drive in it, and then I had the five and a quarter inch floppy there. This was an IBM XT, you know, an 8088, 4.077 megahertz, the slowest PCs there were. It was ridiculous, right? And I'm, and and later that year I put a 60040 in here. So the XT Bridgeboard was just a piece of crap. I, I used it a little bit, uh, opened up a window, had a serial card maybe in it to see that you could run a DOS program. But when I needed this drive bay for my hard drive, I'm just like, get that thing out of there. And I think I just put it back in the static bag and packed it away. And here it is, uh, you know, 30 years later, and I'm going to open it up again. So that's the project I'm going to do. Uh, and th so the challenge is get the, pr the first uh, DOS-based program I ever wrote, the first real program, not just a, a trivial uh, programming assignment for the class, get to get that working on the bridge board. So I wrote it on a 386 machine, uh, but I, it just uses, as far as I know, just uses that, you know, the, the, ROM, the ROM BIOS in a PC. So I think it should run on the bridge board. Uh, needs a mouse, needs a particular video mode. If I can't get the video mode built in, I can add a video card. Uh, I've got some monitors laying around. So that's the challenge I'm putting myself for this month. And then um, to, to close out, you know, um, you know, let me know what you think about the project. If any of you are also doing something with the Amiga Bridge Board, I would love to know. And uh, in my dive in the into my crawl space, I found a ton of Amiga doc, uh, Commodore Amiga documentation. I've got the card from the regional sales manager that we were interacting with. We had here's the four color glossy for the Amiga 2500. I've got them for all the the uh, com the Commodore PCs at the time. Uh, I've got uh, pricing for all the bundles and stuff, so I think I'm gonna, you know, dive into this. Or if somebody else wants to do it as well, I'd be happy to get, you know, scans of the stuff to you so you can dive into it. Um, so that's it. Uh, happy December. If you're doing a project as well, especially if it's along the lines that I am, I'd be happy to, to hear about it and uh, let me know. Bye bye.